What's up everybody? We are at the Pauela Cannery meeting at the legendary shaper Keith Tabool. Did I say that right? Tabool. Keith Tabool. And we are here to talk about his Dragonfly shape. It's a downwind subfoil board that is actually very beginner friendly and easy to use. And he's actually going to give us a little bit of a walkthrough, tells us about the feature. So shoot it away. Keith, this board looks pretty... I mean, these boards all look so slick. Yeah. Um, we really worked on uh, something. You know, this design originates with Dave Kalama. So, you know, number one, we got to thank Dave Kalama. I'm glad you're doing this. Pushing the, the, the boards in this direction and, you know, bringing us something that, that is going to give a lot of people a lot of fun. Um, this is my take on what he did. And, I mean, I think I'll just start with the bottom because the bottom is pretty cool it's a full displacement hull okay which is quick to to paddle and get you going and then we introduce also the ginsu concept which allows us to have a displacement hull and yet have the flat to put your foil so this is a really cool concept that we brought to the market and have yeah. been developing in all of our boards this again allows us to have this full displacement hull which in general is really quick to get going yeah maybe not on the high end but you're not looking for high end speed you're looking for quick acceleration and lift off the water so this allows quick acceleration and then the ginsu cut allows the board to detach from the water um, more quickly and then we've we've actually brought this displacement back through the back here and kind of sleeked it out with a little bit of a an angled tail so that you're not because these boards tend to be longer then you're not yep. hitting when you're turning yeah, and yeah. This, this also allows for the board to release back here as well. Um, we have, you know, quite a bit of width here and still some volume to keep the board stable. Um, we've been doing a lot of R&D, even on the new boards and playing with this area. And we're, we're really realizing that it's critical. This area is really critical. And what's cool is I've gone through the learning process in the last two and a half months. And um, it's humbling. It's difficult at first. And yeah. so that's really pushed me to make the boards better and more stable. And this is kind of what we came up with. Um, and then from here, you know, who knows where it's going to go. But this board allows some stability. It's still going to roll a little bit. But once you get that forward motion with your foil, it creates stability because of the foil. And I think what's important is that the board actually starts moving forward quicker than be more stable when you're standing on it originally. So the board moves quickly forward, gives you the stability with the foil, and then as you get up to the two or three knots, it allows you to release. Another really nice aspect of this is it has a really good pumping back and forward motion. And there's a couple videos online right now that shows different people using this exact board to do the flat water pump, uh, like, you know, pumping action to get up on foil. And they're finding it that it's exceptional for that between the little angled tail, the little bit more bevel back here to allow the board to go in the water. Um, you know, the fuller fuller displacement all here that allows that action. Our, also, our deck is just a little bit of a dish deck, flat in the middle, but we have this sort of like a concave like this with a, with a sort of a skateboard angled deck so it allows you to push back and forth more. Um, we have this cut off tail and you know, this pad that's really comfortable um, you know, grippy, comfortable, hard, so you have a, you know, a really nice direct uh, feeling with the, with the board, which is really important for the pumping and just feeling, you know, where you're at in the air and turning and, and all that. We have from 80, 88 liters all the way to 130, and it's from like a 6.8 or 6.6 all the way to an 8.2 in length. Widths are anywhere from 18 to 21, and um, I think the biggest thing for me that I found is that for light wind winging these boards are amazing i was blown away the first experience i had on this board was light wind winging in thailand and yeah at first it was a bit strange to get on a board and it felt tippy but the moment you get some forward momentum it creates and tracks a line and allows the stability and allows you to get off the water instantly so um, i think that's again something else that all the dealers and people have realized that for light wind winging this, these boards are amazing the construction is incredible too. It's basically exactly what we do here in Maui. It's full carbon vacuum lamb. So the boards are light and they're a good strength. I mean, you know, in general, if you want a light and a strong board, you're gonna pay a ton of money. So this is a good compromise between light, strength, 
and something that's going to last you. Cool, so that was a really nice introduction of this board. Now one thing that got me a little curious, that step in the back. Yes. Um, whose brainchild was this? This was Elliot Lebeau's brainchild. He came to me about almost three years ago now and just wanted something to connect himself more with the foil, to be closer with the foil, yet have a board with volume. So that's when we developed the Ginsu concept, which is patented. So we have it patented. Oh, cool. And um, we found that, the, that we did get more connection to the foil, and then we also realized that there was a really a quick release from the water. Mm -hmm. And so we found that there were other benefits from it. So we've just been incorporating it into some of our designs and, and really developing it. It's been fun. Cool. Very, very interesting. Now, in terms of the say the greater picture, yes. uh, SCP foiling, the equipment got so much better that so many people are now getting access to this, can learn it. We can warrior donkeys like me can even learn it. And where do you see the industry going? And or let's maybe rephrase that. Where do you see the industry right now? And where do you see its future potential? Well, I think, you know, the, the industry is, is reaching a pretty wide range of people and they're realizing that all these different kinds of people, different ages, different, you know, whatever, they um, are really enjoying the process and really enjoying foiling. And so I think that they're the, the, in general, the product's going to be developed more for the mainstream and for flatter areas and be just more efficient, more stable and just easier to use. Makes sense, makes sense. Now, you're a developer of boards only, and then there is developers of foils only. Are there certain um, foils that are more recommended with your boards than others? Does it matter? Does, should the customer pay attention to that? I think it's really important to really pair the board with a good foil. And I think a medium aspect to a high aspect is what you would want to use. Okay. You don't want too turny of a foil. Um, I think it's important that the foil has some stability as it starts moving up and lifting. So I think in general, though, most of the new foils that are coming out are going to pair well with these kind of boards mm -hmm. because that's kind of what they're designed for. They're designed for stability. They're designed for, you know, a, a nice slow takeoff and plane and then a good pump and, a, and somewhat of a turn. And I think that that pairs well with what's going on in these okay. kind of boards. So most of the new Makes foils sense. from all the different brands will okay. work well. So it will, the brand that you're choosing, it, it doesn't matter? No, I don't think the brand that you're choosing matters, but I think it's important that the foils are more current. Right, yes, and I can definitely speak from my own um, experience from my recent video that um, a gear matters, uh, old gear, um, I could not get up, new gear I could, you guys can check that out. Um, you're in touch with a lot of people, a lot of uh, customers and uh, vendors, I want to say, all across the world. What's the, what's the feedback that you're getting uh, from your direct, uh, from your dealers? I think in general, at first, dealers were a little concerned that the board is going to be too difficult to access. And as they tried the board, they realized that it's actually pretty easily accessed, especially if you pair it with the right foil. So yes, there's a learning curve. Yes, for two weeks, you're going to struggle. <laughs> but you know what? Once you're up and going and doing it, it's, I find it's the best discipline oh. of all of it. Yeah, so for me, see. the freedom that you have out in the ocean riding swell that with no one around and getting these turns like you're surfing there's nothing like it oh it is it is the best and one last thing just to go a little bit off the rocker here do you think uh, in terms of competitions this, do we see like flat water downwind more uh, competition oh, yeah. sports developing 100 percent I think that it's um, there's something so dynamic about it, and as the foils and the boards get more efficient, and they're able to harness the energy of just a small swell, say in Lake Garda or these areas, that yeah, all this th it's going to develop. I mean, you just saw it in the M two O. I think there was eighty or seventy six yeah. six foilers. That's only going to develop. You know, it's it's that's the premier race in the world, and I think next year there's going to be two hundred. So yeah, it's coming. Totally, totally couldn't agree more. Thank you guys so much Thanks for watching guys. this video. Awesome. This was KT Surfing. KT, KT Surfing <laughs> with his super cool new board, uh, the Dragonfly. And we'll see you guys in the next video.